I really like it here. <laughs> oh, it's, this is a great place. So um, this, what I talk about is joint work with Greg Perlstein. But I say that, uh, okay, what it is, it's really a, a project that is to understand uh, an unpublished letter of Deline. Uh, so, it's, it's an unpublished letter of Deline to Katani and Kaplan. And we need to understand it as part of a project that we were doing. And I'll explain what the project was sort of towards the end. Um, so I, but I start, I start my story with just a, an observation, really, that's, uh, well, so first I start with the definition, but then an observation that's, that is due to Deline. So um, a split uh, mixed hard structure over R um, is, a, is a real vector space, uh, finite dimensional, V, uh, equipped with a bi-grading. Um, so V, C, is what I mean by V tensor C, is equal to direct sum of V, P, Q, for P, Q, and, and Z, um, satisfying uh, V, P, Q bar is equal to V, Q, P. So that's the definition of what a split mixed hard structure is. Um, so uh, let's, I write HS. That's the category of split mixed hard structures. Um, it's a tensor or Abelian category. So the, the morphisms are defined kind of in an obvious way. It's just it's a map, of, a morphism, a map of vector spaces that preserves the bi-grading. The tensor is described in an obvious way. Um, the object is pure. Is a pure of weight k if uh, v p q equals zero for p plus q not equal to k. So and it's kind of clear that every object is a direct sum of pure ones. Just by taking the, well, it's got, that's kind of obvious. Um, so what Deline observed, like, in the first paper on, on mixed Hodge theory is that the pure, uh, the, the split mixed Hodge structures are the representations of uh, an algebraic group. So, um, so you let S be the um, restriction of scalars from C to R, so the Bay restriction of the multiplicative group GM. Okay. Well, let me explain this. So with GM, that's the multiplicative group. So maybe I actually, since I know everybody here is, I think, an algebraic geometry, I explain. S, uh, S has the property that the T points of S 
for T, um, a real algebraic variety, are equal to the um, the GM points of uh, the complexification of T. So in particular, equal to GM of C, which is just C star. Okay, so that, that explains what S is. So then the lens op observation is that um, the category of hard structures is equal to the category of representations of S on finite dimensional real vector space. So it's this one. It's not this one. It's not. Uh, this, this is cool. What do you got? <laughs> this one is not too surprising because um, the representations of S are really easy to, to describe. Um, maybe have some remark. Okay. I mean the, the first remark is it, it's not surprising that there be some uh, group that. HS is the category of representations of because HS okay because HS is a Tanakhian category so it's a tensor category and it also is equipped with a map to vector spaces by just general principles We know it has to be the representations of, of G for some for some group C and G. But the nice thing is that the well, first of all, that it's very nice that G is actually an algebraic group scheme. But it's it's also just nice that G we can kind of understand what G is in this case. You can write it down. But the, the thing is, this, uh, this observation is actually very easy. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of almost trivial. Um, so S tensored over C with R, that's just GM plus GM. Um, so the complex representations of S Are determined. They they canonically decompose. Uh, as so V equals the direct sum of V P Q, where um, so V P Q is equal to a set of V and V such that. Um, well, if rho is the representation, um, let me write, write it like this. So that such a g of v is equal to z uh, of g to the p, z bar of g to the q, v, where uh, z and z bar are the basis of the characters. So the condition that such a representation come from uh, a real vector space, so a real structure on V, is just that VPQ bar is equal to VQP. Uh, so let's say come from a real representation. That. Uh, 
Okay, and maybe I write, I just want to say one more remark about S. Uh, maybe the third remark. Is that S, you can, you can write S as a, another way to visualize S is, is you take the real group S1, you cross it with the multiplicative group, and then you mod out by plus minus one, but it embedded diagonally. So maybe I write it as plus minus one. It's kind of not hard to see that. Um, <coughs> it's just two elements. Or maybe I write it like this, plus minus. It's a diagonally embedded copy of plus minus one. Um, yeah, so since any representation uh, oh, maybe I'll write this. Okay, so suppose V is in HS. Uh, so we can define so we have these filtrations. So WK of V that's by definition the direct sum P plus Q less than or equal to K of uh, VPQ. And that's called the weight filtration. And then FB of V is the direct sum P prime bigger than or equal to P of VPQ. That's called the Hodge filtration. And uh, FPs and the Ws, they determine uh, the Hodge structure V by the formula. Uh, so so they determine the VPQ by the formula of VPQ is equal to FP intersect FQ bar uh, <coughs> intersect WP plus Q. So you could say that a, a split mixed Hodge structure is just a triple uh, it's just a triple VWF um, where VC is a direct sum of the VPQs and the VPQs are defined like this. If you say that, then it's, it's built into the definition that VPQ bar is equal to VQP. So you, so you can define mixed Hodge structure in terms of just the weight filtration and the Hodge filtration. Okay, yeah, now I want to check my... Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so then the next part of the story is that Delin introduced this category of mixed Hodge structures. So a mixed Hodge structure is a triple uh, V uh, WF. Um, so vector space a finite dimensional vector space in two filtrations so this one should be an increasing filtration that one's a decreasing filtration okay such that um, well, I guess I wanted to say such that uh, F dot is is decreasing filtration of VC. W dot is an increasing filtration of V. And um, the F dot 
induces a pure Hodge structure of weight K on GER W K V. So that's the definition. So the, the, the way all these things were motivated is that if X is a compact Kähler manifold, Then uh, HK of XR, that carries a pure Hodge structure of weight K. And then if, if X is any algebraic variety over C, um, HK of XR carries uh, mixed Hodge structure. And you, you don't need R, but you can put Z here. You don't have to put R here. But I, I only care about R for this talk. So, uh, yeah. Split. 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 No, split. Yeah. That's what, so this one, oh yeah, so I'll tell you, yeah. So this is the definition of just any mixed hard structure. So they're, 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 they're not necessarily split. So these guys are the ones that are split. The way this is defined, it doesn't, they don't necessarily, this thing doesn't necessarily decompose the vector space. So maybe I, you know, that's kind of the next thing I want to say. Um, so, what is what? It just means that v, uh, the VP, VPQ is equal to 0 when P plus Q is not equal to K. Pure void K means that... No, split means that it's a direct sum of pure things. But split, the way I did it, I defined from the very beginning split. So split means that VPQ... Split is defined... I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I define... Split just means that there's a bigrading. So maybe I, I say, yeah, I'm going to say something more about that. So, the, so to, what, what, I, what, you'd, what you'd want to do, and what Delene did, is describe the, the mixed guys just in terms of the pure ones. Um, but uh, to, um, to do that, you need a theorem. And here's... So here's a theorem of Katani kaplan and Deline. So suppose V is a mixed Hodge structure. Well, then there exists a unique uh, decomposition of VC. Uh, uh, then let's call the decomposition, or let's, let's call the decomposition VC equals the direct sum or PQ of IPQ, uh, such that so WN is a direct sum P plus Q less than or equal to N IPQ. FP is a direct sum of P prime bigger than or equal to P IP prime Q. So it's kind of, it's, it's the same as these two so far. Uh, maybe I could have just written those two. But then the... So it looks like it would just be coming from a split mixed Hodge structure. But IPQ is not equal to IQP bar. What you have is IPQ is equal to IQP bar mod the direct sum of R less than P, uh, S less than Q. IRS. So in fact, they really define these. So IPQ, in fact, what you have is IPQ is equal to FP intersect FP plus Q intersect, okay, so then FQ bar intersect, oh, it's just FQ bar itself, FQ bar plus FQ minus one bar intersect WP plus Q minus two and one plus, et cetera. So the, the, the cool thing is that essentially the FQ bar, and then there's more stuff, but 
this index goes down by one, and this one only goes down by this go by goes down by two. But then the next step is uh, plus. Then they just go down by one all the time. Okay, so it, what it does is it basically decomposes the the hard structure as well as it as a it gives you a bigrading, but the bigrading doesn't satisfy this property that uh, the bar of the IPQ is equal to IQP. It satisfies it modulo some lower stuff. Okay. And I took the time. Um, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so maybe let's say some notation. Okay, so suppose V is a vector space, and and T is an R. Uh, and suppose F is a filtration. Okay, so then uh, I write like T dot F for the filtration, where T dot F of P is just equal to T of F. So T dot F is the name for the filtration that you get from um, so it's the filtration that you get from acting on F by T. Um, so if W is a filtration uh, of F, of V, uh, a grading of W. is just a, a semi-simple, well, it's just a Y in envy, such that um, such that WK is a direct sum of the jth eigenspace of Y. Uh, for j less than or equal to k. So just, it just, the eigenspaces of it pick out the, the graded pieces of the filtration. That's, that's the best way to say it. And then uh, an automorphism also acts on grading. So t dot y is by definition just t y t inverse. And that grades t y, uh, uh, so if, if, if y grades f, uh, gets, grades w, then t dot y uh, grades t dot w. So that, that's how it's set up. Um, then just one more piece of notation is that if, if v is a if v is a mixed hard structure, well then end v is also a mixed out structure. So it inherits a weight filtration, a, a hard filtration from V. Um, and lambda is by definition the set, the direct sum, uh, P less than zero, Q less than zero, of the IPQs of NV. So because, because NV is a mixed hard structure, it gets IPQs itself. And it's the lambda is the direct sum of those. Um, so now I tell you a theorem, which is, um, which is uh, well, no, actually, first I tell you one, one more piece of notation. So if VFW is a mixed hard structure, then uh, Y of FW 
That's the grading of W defined as follows. So y f w is equal to p plus q of v for v in i p q. So it grades. Um, it grades uh, w. Okay. Um, and then here's a little observation, which I'll prove to prove something. So V is split, which is the same thing as saying it's a direct sum of its pure pieces. If, if and only if uh, Y of VW is in NV of R. So I maybe should have said this thing is defined. This thing is a complex endomorphism of, of V, but since the IPQs are only defined over C, it's not necessarily you know it's not necessarily real. In fact, it's real if and only if the thing is split, and it's it's not it's it's pretty easy to prove actually. I prove it. Okay, so. Um, So it, this way is obvious. So it, it, the point is that if it's split, then IPQ is equal to IQP bar. So that's kind of obvious. Because in the case that it's split, the IPQs are just those VPQs. Um, Okay, this way, it's kind of obvious, but it's, it's, it's kind of nice. The YF, this YFW always preserves F and W. Because it's kind of defined to do that. I mean, it's defined to preserve these IPQs. Uh, so if YFW is in and a V R it is a morphism of mixed hard structure. But then the the eigenspaces are hard structures. So then So if the eigenspaces are sub, and, and then uh, you know the this thing is the v is going to be the direct sum of all the eigenspaces. So if the eigenspaces are hard structures, then the the then v is a direct sum of its of sub hard structures. Um, okay. So now here's a theorem. So this is a uh, Katani uh, Kaplan and Schmidt. Let's say let let VWF be a mixed hard structure. So there's a unique uh, delta in the sky lambda v. Um, such that V e to the minus i delta um, dot f and w is a split mixed side structure. I should say this is so this is lambda. Uh, what did I what did I define? So this is lambda. So it's lambda. It's, it's the real part of lambda of v. So let's maybe write lambda intersect end of v r. I'm going to call this lambda r. So there's a unique real element of this guy lambda 
the, that consists of all the guys that strictly lower the IPQs by one, such that this guy is a split. This V U the minus I delta dot F on W is split. Okay, so I was going to prove this, but then I think I'll run out of time if I prove it. The proof is actually really cool and pretty easy, um, but I, you know, I think I'll run out of time if I do it. So uh, I want to say some corollaries. So the, the first corollary is that um, the, the category of mixed hard structures It's equivalent to the category of pairs V delta, where V is a split mixed hard structure, and delta is in lambda R of V. Write, it, I'll write this as lambda R of V, I guess. So delta is an endomorphism of V, so maybe I'll just It's an endomorphism of, of it's an endomorphism of V that strictly lowers each of the IPQs by one. Um, so the, um, this is nice because we can kind of understand split guys, and we can understand deltas. Kind of understand deltas, and the, the, it's the cat. I mean, it's the cat. A morphism is one that you know is a, is a morphism of the split guy, but also commutes with the deltas. Okay, and, and then Deleen turned it into something. That sounds like even nicer. Um, so he he turned it into a description of the Tanaki and Galois group of this category of mixed Todd mixed Todd structures. So you set L let's set L C equal to um, the direct sum. Let's say C on D P Q, where so just the C vector space generated by one element for every pair of integers P, Q, where P is less than zero and Q is less than zero. OK, just the C vector space uh, with these DPQs as generators. OK, and then you let, um, you can give this guy a real structure by de just defining dpq bar to be equal to dqp. Okay, so then um, the you let um, you, let's let Lee. Be the free Lie algebra on just L, the, the the real part of L, the free, so the the you know the, the underlying real vector space. Um, on L, and then let's let U equal the the, the associated. Um, pro-unipotent group. So to every Lie algebra, there's an associated, um, um, maybe I should, for, for every um, pro-nilpotent Lie algebra, which this is, there's, there's an associated pro-unipotent group. And so this, you let u be equal to that. So um, this guy has an action of s on it. So the s acts on LR. Okay, by letting, just by letting, um, well, by letting the, by, by the action that corresponds to the grading by the DPQs. So it makes, 
it makes MR into an infinite dimensional pure hard structure. I would call it an infinite dimensional S rep. So then S acts on U. So S acts on U as well. Um, so then you can define um, let's define M0 to be the semi direct product. And then the Lane's theorem is that uh, <coughs> the category of mixed hard structures is equivalent to the category of representations of this guy, M0. So th the thing is, it's not, it's not that hard to get his theorem. I mean, his theorem is not that mysterious, given what happens with these deltas. So th the idea is that if you're given, um, if you're given a delta, then you know how these, uh, then you can decompose it as a direct sum of delta PQs, the direct sum of its pieces in the IPQs. So that, and the delta acts on V, so each of the delta PQs act on V, so that tells you how you should let these guys, these DPQs, act on V, and that tells you what you should do with U, or how you should let U act on V. And, um, because this is a freely algebra, there's not really any more information. I mean, if you to to rep to to have a representation of the free al freely algebra on V, you just have to tell what the generators do to V, and there's no other condition. So I mean, the theorem is not really that mysterious, um, but it's nice because it gives you a you know, it tells you exactly what the Galois group is of the category of mixed odd structures, and in a way that is sort of you know, vaguely understandable. Uh. Okay, so, uh, so now I want to talk about degenerations. The universal property of what? Another group of presentations uh, category that's coming from this category, right inside. We like another category. I mean, it's all it's the represent. The, oh yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's just it's a representation of that thing. The one thing that you can say, or that's that's. I mean, there's a couple of things that are interesting. So one is that this. Okay, this guy is a semi-direct product. So the sequence is split. But it's, it's not split in a unique way. So there's, in fact, U acts transitively on the set of splittings. So um, what it means is that every, so every mixed hard structure, a mixed hard structure is a representation of these. So to everyone, there's a, there's a way of canonically splitting all of them, right? Because this whole sequence is split. But there's, there's not just one canonical way of splitting them all. There's a lot of canonical ways. Another thing that's, that's cool about this is you can tell things about, y you, can, you can answer questions about extensions of mixed hard structure, just like using these, because this all becomes something about the cohomology of this group, M0. So it's kind of a cool thing. OK, so now I want to say about degenerations. I want to say something. So I don't want to talk about all degenerations. I want to talk about the sort of simple degenerations. And those, the, the easiest way to say what they are is just to say what a, nil, what a nilpotent orbit is. So, so a nilpotent orbit is, well, it's a quadruple. So V and F W where V, F, W, or as, okay, we're in, okay well, maybe I should say, where F, where V is a vector space, F and W are filtrations, and N is a nilpotent operator on V. 
Okay, and then it has to satisfy some things. So satisfying. So one that n of fp is contained in fp minus one. So this is what's called Griffith's transversality. Uh, so then the other thing is that for each um, z and c, with in the imaginary part sufficiently large, um, e to the z n dot f comma w is a mixed out structure. And then the second, uh, the the third by uh, the third property, um, <coughs> which uh, maybe I won't completely explain. The, the the relative weight filtration. So M. So the M is a filtration that depends on N and W. Exists. And it makes a... And it makes a... V... A FM a mixed hard structure. This is called the limit mixed out structure. Okay, so the, the relative weight filtration is a filtration that depends just on N and M, and N and W. And if, if it exists, it's unique. And Deline defined it, what it is, in terms of just linear algebra of N and W. Uh, but when it exists, it, it causes this thing to be a hard structure, a mixed hard structure. And then maybe the fourth is polarizability, which I just generally want to skip. Okay, but the, the th these things, this, this, the category of these is a Tanakian category. Which is in general, like extreme, it's really, like very hard to describe. So which is probably too big to describe. And maybe I should say they, they arise from the generations of, mix, of families of mixed type structure over a puncture disk. The, the, So basically, the reason that the Z is in C is you really want to think of the Z as being in the upper half plane, and the upper half plane is the universal cover of the puncture disk, and that, that's sort of what's going on. So since these guys are too complicated to, to describe, um, Schmidt picked out an easier group of them, and those are called uh, SL2 orbits. Um, so here's a definition, which is, I mean, it's really a proposition that's uh, due to Sch Schmidt, but uh, I'd say it and I'll just define, well, I'll, de I'll define a nilpotent orbit to be an SL2 orbit. If, um, <clears throat> so one is, it should be split. So V should be the direct sum of all of its weight graded pieces. And two is that for each for each K, uh, the limit the limit mixed hard structure of this GER W K of V is also split. So this is not the way it's usually given. This is not the usual way it's usually defined. But the, the thing is, for each k, this guy is also a nilpotent orbit because n acts on this, and it has the Hodge filtration induces a, a Hodge structure on this. So this is a pure nilpotent orbit, and it has a limit, which is a, a mixed Hodge structure. And you can ask that it be split, so it's split over R. 
And if these two things happen, then what you get is an SL2 orbit. So I should maybe say why you call it an SL2 orbit. Um, so maybe I make an observation. Okay, so define, um, so for the observation is first, first of all, S, it embeds in GL2. The way to see that is you, um, by, you realize, um, uh, you realize GL2 as GL of C, viewed as a real vector space, and then S, uh, so this is via the map that, um, well, it sends S of R, which is equal to C star, uh, into GL R of C. Well, in the kind of obvious way. Okay, so the S acts on GL2. Okay, so then you can define, so then since it acts on GL2, it acts on SL2 by sort of uh, outer automorphisms. Maybe I write it like this. So X, X, S, X acts on GL2 by inner automorphisms. So it acts on, um, on SL2. Okay, and I like to find the Schmidt group. By, so let's just call it Schmidt. By definition equal to just SL2 semi-direct product, this guy S. Okay, and then the observation is that SL2 orbits exactly correspond to representations of this Schmidt group. Okay, and it, this one is not, it's not hard to see. I mean, wh what's going on is, I'd mean, uh, say a little bit about the, the correspondence. Um, okay, so let, let's let rho uh, from Schmidt to V be a representation. So what you do is you set N equal to rho of, well, this Schmidt group is a semi-direct product. So you set it equal to rho of 0, 1, 0, 0, comma, just the identity. So this is an element of SL2 that's just well, the identity. Um, e to the i n dot f. Okay, this is this annoying i. But e to the i n dot f is the filtration induced by the action of s. Okay, and then w uh, is the weight filtration induced by the action of s. So this is a Hodge. Sorry, I should have said this is a Hodge filtration induced by the action because action, an action of S gives me both a Hodge and a weight filtration. Okay. Okay. Now I can say the theorem. Pause. Okay, so now what I, uh, maybe I said one more thing. This the Schmidt group. It's there's a nicer way to see it. So we have one goes to z mod two, so you go plus minus one, goes to um, s one cross g m cross s l two, goes to the Schmidt group. So I like to see it this way because I don't like to think of reductive groups as semi-direct products. I kind of like to untwist them. So it's just an, it's just a, you take this reductive group and you mod out by this something, this plus minus thing in the center. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now the, the group, um, the group, uh, the Schmid, Schmid, it acts on this guy L that I said before um, by letting Maybe I'll write it like this. So R, maybe 
I'll tell you what it, how it acts in the complex. Will you let C of D minus 1 minus 1 be the trivial representation? So it's a trivial representation of the SL2 factor, and then it gets its hard structure from the, the S factor. And then this guy, minus 2 minus 1 plus C, D minus 1 minus 2, is a standard representation. And then so on and so forth. So e each one of the irreducible representations of SL2 arises this way. Okay. So uh, just let's. So then you can set set M1 equal to the Schmidt group semi-direct product that guy U. So since it acts on L, it acts, since the Schmidt group it acts on L, it acts on the freely algebra generated by L, and it acts on that pro-unipotent group that comes from it. So you could set M1 equal to Schmidt group. Um, so here's the theorem. Um, So let's let split one denote the subcategory of no potent orbits. Such that the the um, such that what which are yeah I want to such such that each graded piece is uh, is, a, is an SL two orbit. So such that. Uh, GER WK of V uh, is a, an SL2 orbit. So it's, it. So the V isn't necessarily split, but the limit, this means that the limit mixed hard structure of each one of the weight graded pieces is, is split. Okay? Then this category. then split one is the same thing as the representations of this group M1. Okay, so in the remaining like two minutes, I would I say a couple of things. I mean, the, the nice thing about it is that no potent orbits are some, something very complicated, right? The whole bunch of them is, is probably too complicated to ever understand. <clears throat> but the, to, to have a nice, to have a subcategory of them that you can understand, as the, where you can understand the Tanaki and Galo group, kind of cool thing. From uh, so the, the, it also has an application. So I, uh, yeah, I, I say I just say what the main application is. So the application was to the, to understanding the locus. Uh, where variation of mixed hard structure splits. So what you can say is that if suppose V over S is an admissible variation. of mixed hard structure. Over uh, an algebraic variety S, so admissible variations are the ones that could ever arise in practice. Could ever arise from taking mixed hard structures of an, al of an algebraic family. The, the way they're defined has to do with uh, the relative weight filtration, so the, the existence of that. So then. Then the, the theorem, so this theorem is by me and Greg Perlstein and by um, Kato uh, 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 Sui and uh, Nakayama and then Christian Snell. So 
there are several different the, the versions of it. But the theorem is that the, the locus, the set of S and S such that Vs is split, is an algebraic subvariety of S. Uh, the the way this thing comes in it has to do the what you have to do to prove that it's an algebraic subvariety is to understand the asymptotics of of the variation as you go to the boundary of S and um, somehow knowing this uh, somehow knowing this theorem helps us calculate the uh, this the sort of splittings the the possible splittings of the of the um, of the HUD structure as you go to the limit. It's kind of harder to say more than that. But anyway, the theorem is an important technical device in the, the, in the, in the proof of this. So that's all I've got to say. So I end it here, yeah. <laughs> Is the algebraic variety is closed variety or open variety, or it could be any kind of combination or local? Oh, no, it's closed variety. Yeah, open it's just variety? A, no, it's closed variety. Closed variety. Yeah, the locus. Yeah, maybe I should have said that. It's a, it's a closed sub. Yeah. Okay. It's sort of. It's actually uh, that part of it is not hard because the thing is, it's a closed. Um, okay, it's a closed. Uh, yeah, you know, it is sort of obviously, but obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think about these things for a while. Uh, more or less obviously, it's a, a closed uh, analytic subvariety. So the whole challenge is to prove that um, you, the, 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 way it's, the way the thing is done, you take S and you embed it in a projective variety, S bar. And the whole challenge, so, so then you have some analytic subvariety of S. So like I say, it's, it's, it's kind of obviously an analytic subvariety, a closed analytic subvariety. But you have to show that you know, what, you got some, what you got is an algebraic subvariety of S bar. So what it means is you have to show that it extends to a closed, subs this closed subvariety, let's call it Z in S, extends to a closed analytic subvariety Z bar of S bar. That, that's what you have to do. That's the whole challenge. So the, everything about proving it reduces auto, like almost automatically to um, just what goes on at the boundary. And because it reduces to what goes on at the boundary, you, you kind of only have to worry about what goes on. You, you can replace this S and S bar by um, just the polydisc. By, I, my notation for the puncture disc is delta star. So delta star to the r sitting in delta to the r. So you just have some variation over delta star to the r. You need to know that the locus where it splits actually extends to delta to the r. And that, that's, that's it. So then in the end, you don't care whether the thing was algebraic or not. You actually care about this case. Um, and that, that's where the new potent orbits come in, too, because you immediately pass to a, a universal cover, and then the the variation kind of gives you a it, it gives you a no potent orbit in a sort of obvious way I don't know, there's no way you know well it gives you one so maybe so I have another question so here uh, it's maybe it's closed then is there some kind of uh, like a minimal value of the co-dimension bound or co-dimension low bound kind of thing or no I mean that, that yeah that would be great if there was yeah <laughs> I mean that, that, that no yeah um, yeah, the, the, okay, I mean, the, I, the I, theorem, kind of. No, you're okay, uh, so let me make one comment on that. So there, the, <laughs> there's, uh, for the most important case, right, is the case where uh, the variation um, has two graded pieces. So the top part is just, is just, so here you have to work with the integral structure. It's just, the top part is just Z, and the second part is some H, which is weight minus one. So the variation, at each point, it only has these two weight graded pieces. So in that case, an ex what you're looking at is the, at each point, you have an extension of Z by H. And these things, this is a complex torus. 
that guy is a complex. Okay, so what do you get out of this then? What do you, what do you get out of a variation over S, if the variation looks like this? It's just a section of a complex torus. This is what, you, what you get is a normal function. Okay, so for every, if you have a variety X, and you have a Hodge class that's primitive, uh, and say X is embedded in projective space, you can cut the variety with, um, you can cut the variety with hyperplane sections, and in each one you'll get uh, uh, um, you'll get an element of this guy. So they glue together, they give you a normal function. If you could show that for every Hodge class, that normal function would vanish on a positive dimensional set, so that zero, the locus where it splits is positive dimensional, it would prove the Hodge conjecture. <laughs> so there's no, so that, 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 uh, <clears throat> so if you had a lower bound for the co-dimension, that was kind of workable, you would prove the Hodge conjecture. <laughs> so the, yeah, that's way on the way the, 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 yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a very difficult problem to find a lower bound. Yeah. So your previous statement is uh, quite as complete enough to prove uh, this last result? My, co my previous statement is... Yeah, that one is a split. One is a, represent is a representation of that one. Yeah. Or oh, you want me to give it, you want me to say a statement, to prove it? Well, definitely you are going to use this result to prove uh, the last result over here. Yeah, the, yeah okay, so I mean, you, you want me to know how we used it? How, how we use it to prove that? Or so, the, so, no, I tell you, I mean, I, do I, yeah, so, the, how, so how we use it is, to, yeah. so there, there, um, yeah, it has to do with this. So the the remember I said that okay. So yeah, okay. So the, I mean, I I can't. I I would have a hard time like completely explaining it. But I can try to give you some of the idea. I probably should have done that before. So there's two. The way that M naught was defined, it was defined. Um, uh, it was defined as a semi-direct product. And um, if you kind of trace back how the, that guy came, I mean, it, it came from by, by, by having this, this guy delta, right? Which it had the property, so it, it actually has the property that e to the minus i delta dot f on w is always split. And it, it's a unique guy.